we're finding a lot of people um, are still kind of confused as what they need to renew their license now. So the reason for this is because after 9-11, laws were passed that um, they're going to be more strict um, checking um, all of our documentation for license renewals in the hopes of preventing terrorism. So we have gone to a couple of classes, not a ton, but um, one was on fraud and to recognize like social security cards. Well, believe it or not, there are 400 different types of social security cards. So that's not anything that we can, you know, really know for sure. So we have a scanner that will check and see if it's a valid social security card. So there's two types of documents now for licenses. One is the real ID, which I'm sure everybody's heard about that requires, you know, your firstborn child, plus your mortgage house, and everything else like that. The second is the standard ID that is similar to what you have now, but with that standard ID, as of October 2020, you would not be able to get into a federal building or use it to fly domestically. So I'm going to cover a couple of things, you know, for what you need. And most of the people have the real ID. So that's kind of what I'm going to talk about. So first of all, you're going to need your social security card. It cannot be limited. If you don't have a social security card, you can use a 1099 or a W-2 form. You cannot bring me a copy of your 1040 tax bill. You cannot bring the Medicaid card. They are very strict. Those are pretty much the only things that you can use if you're a US citizen. Um, next, um, birth certificate or passport. If it's a birth certificate, it has to be a certified copy. It cannot be from the hospital. Also, if the name on the birth certificate is Susan Jane Smith, and now you're Susan Jane Ryan, we need to see how you got to Ryan. Did you just legally change your name? Did you get married? If you got married, we need a copy of the marriage certificate. Um, if your name is Susan Jane Ryan, you come in and you now are like Christy Ryan. Well, how did you get to be Christy Ryan? Well, you know, kids have always called us that. You know, when I first got my license, I put Christy on it, and I've had it ever since. We can't do it. Um, you have no proof, you did not legally change your name. That would be something you'd have to go to the DMV. And unfortunately, DMV is now, minimum is like two and a half hours. So, if, once you have all your things about proof of citizenship, then we go on to proof of residence. Now, now you have to show us that you actually live in Massachusetts. So if your driver's license is still valid, we can use that as one. The second would be a utility bill, a credit card bill, providing it has your residential address and your name on it. Uh, you could do an FID card um, that would have your address on it. Um, it's just not nothing with your box. You can use um, a checking account statement, but with the checking account, they have to show a copy of the check on it. Most banks are not doing that anymore, but you can do a savings account or something like that. So those are basically the things that we need to do um, a renewal. And then there's, a, there's the application that you would fill out once you go into the office. You can do it online. It would only, if you do it online, it will take you so far, and then you have to stop because all these documents have to be scanned in, and they're checked through this nationwide database to make sure you're not a terrorist. Do you guys have any questions? Yes. I, my license, I just looked this under my old address. <coughs> That's fine. We can change an address. Okay. Yep. Yeah. It's more concerned about the names. Yes. Is this just Massachusetts or is it federal? This is one of the last states to do it. A lot, of, most of the other states are already doing it. So yeah, Massachusetts is late to the game. That's why we have it's such a panic to try and get this done by 2020. <coughs> but yeah, they're all doing it. If one just needs it for an ID, what are they going to be get an old person who does not have a license? So if you're doing just an ID, you're still going to have to prove that you were born in the U.S. Um, the social security card, um, we could just validate through the computer. So pretty much the birth certificate. You're just going to do a mass ID. Okay? And then your ID. The social security card, mm -hmm. 
the ones they had gave out earlier mm -hmm. don't have, they have right on there Medicare and Medicaid and all that. Yeah. Is that? No, we cannot use the Medicaid or Medicare card. Those are also being changed and your social security numbers are going to be taken off mm -hmm. for security. So you have to get that social security card. Or if you file any type of taxes or whatever, you get any type of income, you're getting a 1099 at the end of the year by the U.S. government. And you could use that. I know, it's, it's a challenge. So that's kind of what we're sort of getting out. So for people's birthdays, um, they have time to collect this information and spend a little on the crazy side. Um, this first like month and a half, you know, people who had to get it done right away, they've been coming in three and four times, not having the right documents. So we're just trying to get out and just say, okay, if your license renews in June, you got some time to start looking for this stuff. If uh, I have you mine last year, mm -hmm. so is it uh, recommended that I go back in and go through this process to get the real ID now? So do you have a passport? No. No. Okay, so if you think that you're going to fly um, in, by 2020, yes, you would come in and you would do a duplicate license, but you would still need all of this. Okay. Yeah. Yes. What if my guy, I think the same thing with my license is going to do for a while. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have a passport. So then you're fine. You can use the passport to apply and you can use the passport to get into a federal building. Oh, you can have a The only thing is it's the bank. So well, the, I mean, that's just it. A lot of people yeah. don't have that easy access, access to it. But that, you could use that as a backup. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Is that January 2020 or December? October 2020. October, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Before we go, I'm going to ask Yeah. Okay, so then there's. Um, uh, some other things, do you have a uh, certificate of citizenship? Um, do you have a non US passport? I have a European Okay, so on here, it's going to show you all the different things that you need, okay? Oh. So, yeah, you can bring that. My license expired in the first 2020. Perfect. I'm not going No, 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 no. No need to. Any other questions? Okay, well, and thank you so very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, stay. Okay. Uh, my uh, yeah. The next uh, we have uh, Antonio, who has many hats that he wears here in town uh, today. <laughs> he's also fresh. Not me. Not you. But anyway, he's here. I think he's going to start off with the uh, hazardous. hazardous Hazard mitigation. Hazard mitigation plan. No prepare and be ready to go. Sue, so, on the show here, I'm sure the judge will give you a passport back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we start, before we start, I'd like to uh, thank you all for having me here, but I'd like to acknowledge Chief Cowell and uh, Deputy Sheriff Lori, this is National Police. Uh, Peace Officers Week. Um, thank you for your service to the communities and the work you do. <laughs> Saying that, just in the back, listen to the simultaneous the races on the end. Um, I was asked to come here and talk about uh, actually one thing, but I asked if I could touch base on a couple other things. Um, first, I'm going to talk about briefly the Alton has Hazard Mitigation Plan. One of the things that we're required to do is to, if we have a chance to talk to the public about the plan, that we do so. So I thought I'd take a few minutes to talk about it. Every five years, the state of Massachusetts and the Federal Emergency Management Association Organization, FEMA, requires town to uh, redo and revise any uh, hazard mitigation plans you have in the town. We're required to look at different areas, look at problems that occur in the town, and come up with solutions for what those problems are. Uh, one of the big problems we have in Dalton is flooding. So we have to look at where we have flooding and uh, take action for it. Does anybody know where the nearest floodplain is to where we are right now? Right here. Right here. You're sitting on it. <laughs> Excuse me. So to this end, for the last four years, the town of Dalton has had an application to the federal government to uh, redo the drainage system and the water system that comes out of Walker Brook, which is right over here, 
or half the damage, who knows. Um, and uh, take care of water and redistribute it in such a way as that it's not attacking the senior center every time we get a major storm. So these are the type of things that we're trying to do in the areas we go. I have some handouts I'll leave for you guys to look at. I don't want to take a lot of time on this because there's other things I have to cover. But um, this is basically where our plan is. We'll be finalizing the plan in the next month and everything. Um, we've looked at different areas. Think about where you live, think about the areas. If you have a, a question about what, um, is there a problem with an area? Is there something that can be done for this? Please try to get a hold of me. I can be called at the town hall, um, extension 40. Uh, there's an email if you use an email. It's em at dalton-mass.gov. Uh, some of that information will be left here. If you have a question about a problem, do you think it's something that has to be addressed? It could be as uh, simple as uh, if you live somewhere near the woods and there's a big pile of dry wooden it would in it that you're concerned about a fire from it, it's something we might be able to look at and take some action to fix. The other person you can call, Chief Cow, he can get information to me. Um, he's on the committee to help form this. So it's just a very important thing that we do, as I said, every four to five years, just to make sure that we can try to address problems. Okay? Thank you for letting me take some time for that. The next thing, Code Red. How many people here get the code red messages? How many people here look at the phone and say, oh, it's an 800 number, and don't answer it? <laughs> okay? That's a problem. And it's a problem we're trying to work on solving. Unfortunately, the system, code red system is a wonderful system. Um, but it uses uh, computer-generated calls out to the people. For the town of Dalton, it, it contacts 5,700 phones anytime there's a call. And they're unable to use the 413 uh, area code. Doesn't make much difference anymore. I got a phone call from myself the other day to sell me solar panels. Um, so uh, we're working on that and trying to get it. At least if you get a phone call, um, I have the number here somewhere. Um, if you get a phone call from the number, uh, any 800 number, listen to the first couple of words. If it's an emergency management call, it's going to say Town of Dalton Emergency Management, Town of Dalton Fire Department, Town of Dal Dalton Sewer Department, Town of Dalton Police Department, and you'll know that it's something that you need to know about. Now, we didn't have everybody raise their hands. Code, code Red is an integral part of what we can do within the community. Um, Years ago, when we first started it, we would get a list of everybody's phone number for what they call a landline, your hard line in the house. Fewer and fewer people have those. They have the cell phones, so they're not paying for the other phone. We need to know what the cell phone number is so that we can put it in the system and you can get the calls. We can send calls to your home phone, a cell phone. Uh, we can text you a message. We can send you an email. If you're on social media, we could send you a message directly to you through social media if you prefer. The whole idea is getting the message out and letting people know. Uh, a few years ago, we had a minor, uh, small tornado in the south end of Dalton. We sent out a message saying, emergency situation, stay out of town. I don't, this is a session of town, I don't think we've had that many cars on South Street in Dalton. <laughs> um, because you live in Dalton, so you gotta know what's going on. But, um, so, wh what I'll, I'll try to do is we'll set something up so that people can give us your cell phone numbers. You can also go to the town website, and once you're on the website, there's a section on the code red that you can go in and you can put your own information in on it. Um, the website, the paperwork, once you get to the website, will look something like this. And it's fairly simple. You put your name, your address. The key information that you make sure you put in here is zip code 01226. Okay, because that will tell the code red where to send the message. So um, we can set something up uh, with 
Kelly about getting people to sign up, to give us the information, because if, if you don't have a computer, you don't have the ability to put it in, we will put it in for you. Our key is we want you to be notified. We want you to know where to go, uh, and what to do, okay? Um, the, believe it or not, about 70% of Dalton is in an area that could be pr prone to flooding because of the location of where the dams are up above. The Windsor Dam, the Cleveland Dam, okay? Um, so these are things we need to make sure that people are getting the messages. Can I make so, two points? Yes, sir. One point is I am registered for my mother's address in Dalton. So that I, even though I live in Pittsfield, if something's happening that and Dan selects just that area of town, I will get it so when my mother gets the notification, I do as well, and I can touch base. So if you wanted somebody, in your, one of your relatives, uh, who might not live in Dalton, to know that maybe your area may be uh, uh, having a water main shut off due to repairs or whatever, a storm-related uh, warning, if you, is that true? You just, they can register their phone number, but utilize your address in Dalton with the 01226 so that a family member can be notified as well by yourself. That is something we've, we've, we've stressed with people in Pomeroy Manor that we've spoken with. Yeah, Pomeroy. I got it right this time. Um, because of its proximity to Center Pond. Okay. Uh, give us the number. Give your family the, the, the information they need because they can help us, especially if we have to move people. We have to evacuate people. Okay. Second point I just wanted to make is we try to utilize this only when needed. If anyone had kids in school, you know what I mean. Every night I get a robocall call from this, again, I live in Pittsfield, from the Pitt, Pittsfield School District, um, giving us an update of the schedule of the week or something else. And you kind of get inundated with it, so you kind of hang up before you even hear what the message is, because you're just kind of tired of every night the robocall call from the school. That is not what we do with this. We are only notifying you of a severe weather alert uh, that we need everyone to understand. Flooding, like you said, if you might be affected by a water main shut off because they're doing a repair, uh, so we don't get inundated at this batch of why is my why is my water not working or trickling. We normally try to give you advance notice uh, if uh, uh, a detour, if we're shutting down uh, a street for an extended period of time, we try to let people know, particularly with morning and afternoon commutes. So um, it may be an accident that is going to have traffic diverted for four hours, we try to send out an alert. So um, if you see it, it's usually something that's significant enough event in Dalton that we just are trying to be, uh, help you and have some information of why is Main Street backed up for uh, 10 minutes down the road? It's because who's tonic's been closed. So we'd rather give you advance notice, again, with water, if your water's off. So um, we try to underutilize. Right. We have the ability to send out all kinds of messages. We have had, we did that because from time to time there is going to be uh, a non-emergency situation that we need to have people know about. But we have very strict rules on what messages that we can send out. Like if you call up and say, we're having a bake sale, can we put something out? We're a town organization, absolutely not. Um, we had, we had one, important. one occasion where I was notified at home that um, multiple residents were getting calls from what looked like the Dalton Police Department, so they were answering it and they were being harassed. So as soon as my officers called me and said, hey, we don't know what's happening, but we're getting a lot of phone calls of dispatch with pe angry people saying, why do you keep calling my house? Well, I realized it was a scam and people were being harassed, so uh, Dan and I have a capability from wherever we are on our cell phone to record it. Now, it just so happens that where I was, it was kind of bad cell service, so if you heard my message, I sounded like a robot or underwater and I was in and out. But my message was, this is Chief Co of the Dalton Police, and most people, <coughs> thankfully we're a small town, most people know my name or, or my voice for Dan's voice, so when it says emergency management, you all know, oh, this is Dan Filio, because we know him and know the voice. So that's kind of confirmation that it's not a scam, and that's why we try to say, this is Dan Filio of emergency management with a message, or this is Chief Jeff Co with a message, and my follow-up message was, you get a call from one of these police department numbers, and you know there is a, a, a scam going on right now. Uh, you know this evening, you know ignore it, don't answer it. If we have an emergency and need to contact you, we'll have an officer go to your home. So it was just again to let people know 
that there was that town-wide scam going on. But those are the things you'll hear. So you're going to hear Dan's, more than likely Dan's voice or mine. Um, or Jerry Cahill. Maybe, maybe Jerry Cahill. And again, you all know us. And you, you'll recognize the voice. So that's the confirmation of if it's real or not. We will never ask for you to call a number and give us information. We are only giving you information. We don't need you to call us. So a lot of times people will call the dispatch center and say, I got a message. I'm calling you. You know, what do you need? Well, we didn't need anything. The message was what we wanted to, to give to you. So if anyone tries to say, uh, call us with your credit card number, social security number, it is not us. And it should never happen. We're never looking for information. We just want to give it. Just put the others, if there's extra, these put them at the end. Just as a little aside, I was walking into the police department last week to talk to Jeff about something. My phone walk, went off as I walked in the door, and it was the National Police Officers and Sheriff's Department Benefit Association calling up, and I wanted to know if I wanted to donate to them. So I asked them, do you work with the Dalton Police on this? And the guy says, yes, I did. I said, great, I'm walking into the chief's office right now. You can say hello to them. I heard a click, <laughs> and they had not called us back. So. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, I'm getting off of it a little bit. What Buzzwords. Child, children, cancer, fire, police. These are the things that people use. Elderly animals. use. Animals. Veterans. Veterans. Mm -hmm. To raise money. Anybody ever calls you and says, hey, we're from the National Veterans Association. We want you to donate money. Before you donate money, contact your local veterans associations and make sure that they're there. Contact the police department, the fire department, the senior center, the animal shelters. Don't give your money out over the phone. They're just, it's terrible. You had a question? Uh, no, I had the, the robocalls. I noticed that when you had called, your number, that leaves the message on the machine. A lot of the 800 numbers will click off if nobody answers. So yeah, yeah, they do leave a message. I leave your message. Message yeah. the message. They'll leave a message and also the system is set up so that it will go through and recall. If it doesn't get a message yeah. machine, it will recall within the next 15, then 30, then 45 minutes. Um, so it is, it, it is a wonderful system. Um, I'm awfully glad that we can do it. It's a grant through MEMA that helps us do it. Um, but it's something that we need to take advantage of. And it's something that the elderly is a, uh, a group of people that are the most in danger for emergency because they are, in some cases, they're immobile, hard to move, they don't have the ability. Um, if you don't have a license, you can't just go down and get your car and get out. Um, but we have systems, we have things in place that we can go and we can um, help you move. The last time, Irene, when we had the storm, Irene, and we had evacuated an area, we got the, the shuttle from the senior center. We had Bob Coe, he had a, Bob Coe, I'm sorry, Bob Fay, and he had a radio, so we insisted that if we call him, we had to call him the Bald Eagle. <laughs> you know, so you're sitting there saying, Bald Eagle, can you go out? <laughs> You know, exactly <laughs> Any other questions about COVID? Right. Does it cover the mission? Yes. 684. No. Windsor is, we're a part of a coalition with Windsor and Hinsdale. Okay. So Windsor and Hinsdale, the Windsor emergency, uh, the emergency manager, the fire department, police department, have the ability to send out calls for themselves. Hinsdale has the same, and I can send them to everybody. Okay. We and Dalton can send them to everybody. I'm doing this trouble. I just want to let you know that I have, um, you see, the robot calls drove me crazy, so I signed to get them removed on my phone, yeah. which was great, but it has not stopped emergency call. They still get them. Right. right. There's, a, there's a code system they come in. Most of your robo calls are coming in from computer generated phone call now. Mm -hmm. So you'll get the same call repeatedly, and it'll be from a different number. You used to be able to just block them on your phone. But you can only block so many. So this one's called No More Robo. Yeah. Uh, it's a very good system to set up. I have those on my phones. Mm -hmm. But did it call go up yesterday with the tornado warning? Uh, no, because we were not within the area. There's there's two types of things. You have the tornado watch and the tornado warning. Uh, I'm going to mess this up. The watch is that your area possibly could have a tornado. The warning is. 
spot underneath the couch, and hide your hide your head. You know, uh, we were not in that area. It was as far as south as we were. So it is something we watched closely. They came on channel ten across the, the bottom of the and red came across the bottom. Yeah. All the counties in New York, and then Berkshire County as well. Right. Um, and the actual track of the storm, when it came, when National Weather took a look at it, it actually went to the bottom of Great Barrington and over in Sheffield, and that area was covered. So that was, an area, as I said, it's, that's an area that we keep watch. Um, I get on my phone, I get notices all the time. I send them out to Chief Cow. There's been times I've sent them out to him at 1 o'clock in the morning. And I can just hear exactly what his response is. I already, I get to when they send it to you, I'm on that list, so I get it from them, and then I get it from you. <laughs> I just want to make sure. I know. Like, I hear you. But uh, that's something that we watch, and if, if it was something that we they thought was eminent, uh, then we would be uh, taking a message on that. But, but we have the ability. It's right on our phones. We have a code we punch in, and we can just send a message right out from right here. But, Let's move on. We have no more questions about code red. Main reason I'm here today. No plan prepared. One of the things that's been seen and uh, is, has become identified as a plot as a as a problem is people making emergency plans. Okay, when I my kids were young, I was inundated with all the information about having the plan, sitting down with the kids and saying, okay. If there's a fire in the house, you go down here, and we all going to meet at the big tree in the backyard. We're going to meet over at Joe's house. And uh, a lot of people have those for their families. Okay. How many people in this room right now have a plan? I don't surprise me at all. You have a plan for themselves. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Believe it or not, it, it, it is the seniors who they're seeing. <coughs> the least number of people that are prepared for uh, any type of an emergency. So it's no plan prepared. Know what you're going to do. Know if you have to leave your house, where are you going to go? Are you going to go to your daughter's, your son's? You're not you're going to go to a family friend or another family member. Okay? Where are you going to go? You need to know what that is. You cannot be standing on your front step going, well, I can go to Gloria's, but I don't know if Gloria's up right now. Um, okay, I'll go to Bob's. In the meantime, you got a message saying, get out of your house, get out of it now, and move. You haven't got the time to make a plan then. So you have to know where you're going to go. Know what you're going to do. Plan. Okay? Plan. What is your plan? Okay, what are you going to take with you? On the desk up here, I have some things that I brought in that people should have. A basic kit, toothbrush, comb, that sort of thing. Go to the dentist, they give you their little kit when you leave. That's what we do. We take one of those, put it in one of these bags. I was telling them earlier, but my wife's a kindergarten teacher, so we have frozen sandwich bags. <laughs> um, so I, I, my, my, tooth, my tooth kit, I think, is uh, Al Helga, is it, or Erica? I don't know. <laughs> but it, it's in there. You have this, put this in there. You don't have to take the toothbrush that you are using right now. You can put one aside, a new one, a clean one, have it ready to go in your kit. It's something that's not going to go bad. Um, portable radio. Okay? Not a lot of people have portable radios. It's not a bad thing to have because you could have messages coming over uh, the radio stations telling people what to do and where to stay away from. Okay? This, you have one of these. Okay? A lot of these you can program so you can pick up radio stations so you can consider that. Uh, recently had a situation in Springfield that uh, they had evacuations. And one of the biggest things that people were asking for is, do you have a charger I can use in my phone? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, for a couple dollars, you can buy a spare charger, wrap it in a little bag, put it in your kit, 
and you're ready to go. Just make sure you get one that matches your phone. Okay? Um, you know, if I have an Android, the iPhone stuff doesn't work, and vice versa. Flashlight. You go dollar store and pick up one of these and waste 99 cents. Go somewhere and buy yourself a $5 flashlight, $10 flashlight. Just don't store the batteries in it. Get a metal flashlight. They make them now that you can light up something 75, 100 feet away. Spend a little bit extra money. Have that in there. It's going to last you longer. It's going to be better. We talked to somebody at the town meeting the other day. He says, oh, I've got a flashlight, and, it's, and my batteries are recharging. I said, what are you going to do with the power? Okay. She says, well, I do have a backup. It's solar. <laughs> so, so it's <coughs> what are you going to do with the <coughs> spend a little money and you get it. a lot of these things you can get at places like LP Adams um, uh, Home Depot uh, you go in and look get a nice little flashlight uh, it's a lot simpler um, I mean you can spend a lot of money you don't have to but get a good flashlight so that you have in there it will be very important for you they make them now that you can actually have them so they will pulse. So instead of a straight beam, you have a pulse. So if you're in a dangerous situation, you're trapped somewhere or something, and you have a flashlight and you push it on pulse, and a cruiser goes by, they see a flashlight, they may not think about it. They see one that's flashing on and off. That's something that they, they may key them to come and help you. Should be LED. Excuse me? Should be LED. Yes. OK. First aid kit. Very simple, okay? You're not gonna, don't worry about, you know, what if I need a tourniquet, you know, should I carry a cast? Very simple first aid kit. You're gonna have everything you need in here for minor scrapes and cuts. Um, just make sure you have it. I'll show you something that, this is what I really love. Purified water. So, you get this purified water and you put it in your emergency kit and you sit there and you wait six years and before you have to use it, and then you go, I don't want to drink this water. Everybody has options of getting bottled water, okay? If you drink bottled water at your home, you have some bottled water at home, use that. Don't go out and buy something like this. It's going to cost you too much money. Uh, just remember when you go in that you need to grab a few bottles, okay? Um, this is something I found interesting. Um, and I actually, uh, you probably have to get find a special place for this. These are kits to put water in. Okay? The caps are made, and we were trying to figure this out. They're made to take a, a cap from a regular bottle and put it on the top so you can seal it. Okay? This is if you need bulk water. You know, there's other things you got in there. Emergency blankets. Um, there's different things you can put in your kit. The key is to have your kit. I talked to somebody at the town of Western the other day, and she says, oh, we got the best emergency kit we want. It's in the cabinet in the cellar. <laughs> and I said, it's in, you're going to pick up the cabinet and take it with you? No, we'll go through it and take what we need. How is that going to help you? Because you need to get out. So my suggestion is get a little backpack. Put it in the backpack. Hang it next to the door. Put it someplace where you know it's going to be. Key to this when you have an emergency kit is check it on a regular basis. Especially if you live with someone else, because I can tell you what happened in my house with our kit is one of the kids was looking for a flashlight and they knew there was one in the emergency kit. Yeah. Hmm. So they took it. Two weeks later, after we put a new one in there, the flashlight disappeared again because she didn't remember where she put the other one. <laughs> you can buy emergency kits. You can go out and buy something like this. It'll cost you like a hundred bucks. Okay, anywhere between sixty and hundred dollars. It'll be like this. It could be a round bucket. It could be some of them come in a backpack, uh, and they will all be filled with things that are necessary, but not necessarily what you want to have. Fully loaded. This weighs fifty pounds. Okay. Where are you going to go with it? What are you going to do with it? Okay? 
What, one thing I didn't show you, the very key to any emergency kit you have. Medications. Take your medications with you. You get the little seven day medication things. I have three of them set aside, and I think they're in the Hunter, or whatever his name is, bag. But um, they're set aside in a position that I can just grab them and go, and they can go with me. Okay? Do those meds deteriorate yeah. because they're sitting in there? Well, that's why I, what I do is I change them out. Yeah. And you, you have to. You have to look what's going on. You know, and if, you, if you're taking insulin, then you have to refrigerate it. You're not going to put that in a kit and let it sit there. Okay? Well, why can't you have a little bag in the refrigerator with that in there that you can grab and take with you? But it's a key. Oftentimes, people will get to an evacuation site. They will not have the medications that they need. And the problem is, is that most medication sites, shelter or such, they will have medical personnel there, but they may not be able to issue a prescription for you to get your medication. And I can't take Helga's medication and give it to Carol. All right? So it's key that you have your medications with you, that you have them in the kit. In this pamphlet, there's a list of things that you should have in your kit, things that you should do. Um, key to this is always is to make sure that you keep checking your kit on a regular basis. That you take a look and you take things that are perishable and you remove them. <coughs> and that you rotate things out. A toothbrush, if it's never been used and it's in that little plastic thing, you're good for forever with that. Okay, but there's other things you need to move around and get. These are things, if you get, the, if you get a robocall, you get a message, the police department knocks on your door and says, look, we have to evacuate you now. You're not going to have time to go through and look for different things. You're going to need, possibly need two bags. Okay? One of the bags you're going to need is to change clothes, extra underwear, extra socks, a couple shirts, maybe a pair of pants, something that you can take with you. Okay? You like, you're like my wife, I limited it to two pairs of shoes. Um, <laughs> You know, and you know, I want she doesn't know I went through and changed one of them because I didn't think we're going to be really cute with the four inch feet. <laughs> um, but you need to make sure that you have this ready and have it so that you can just take it and go. You need to be able to go. That's the key to this, is you need to be able to go. You're not going to have time to turn around. You have to prepare. You have to prepare in advance. How many people have pets? Yeah. Okay. This is a brand new area within the last, I'll say, 10 years that they started to realize that they've had people who have pets who refuse to evacuate <coughs> because they can't take Sparky. Now they're saying, bring Sparky. They may not be able to stay in the same shelter as you, but they've got organizations. The Dalton uh, Animal Control Officers on the Council for Berkshire County about what to do with animals. And that, I'm not talking dogs and cats. I'm talking everything from horses, cows, livestock that have to be evacuated, where they're going to go, who's going to carry them, all the way down to activities, uh, smaller animals that have to be carried. OK? Um, so you need to prepare. So you, you've got a kitten. What do you have to bring for the kitten? Food. Water. Okay. Water. Yeah, you should have water in your kit. Right, medicine. So, but, you know, if you have water in your kit, let's say you have two bottles of water, oh. and you've got the cat, you're going to have to take four or more. How long are you going to have to prepare for? Three days. Let's say three days usually. Three days is a good choice. That's what most evacuations are for normal emergency situations. Okay. You have a major situation. Uh, like the hurricanes that go through. Fortunately, we don't see them on the coast. We're not on the coast. A major hurricane go through. They, they have people. They have people who are still displaced from New Orleans from uh, the hurricane went through Katrina. Katrina. Yeah. yeah. So um, you need to prepare. Three days is a good, very good judgment for it. That time, if it's the people who are running the shelters, if you're in a shelter, um, to. Uh, arrange to get food brought in, things like that. Okay? Um, Dalton 
if you if you have to go to a shelter and dog, more likely than not at this point in time, you're going to go. It's fair. There's criteria for shelters that uh, we just don't have in the town. Um, one of which is uh, generators. Um, we could put people in for a short period of time. Senior center is a, is a uh, cooling center for the town of Dalton. That's used. We use that for if it gets too hot, you, you have fans in your house, so you don't have air conditioning, and it gets just gets too hot. We can make arrangements to have the senior center open so that people can come in and stay in a cool environment when we have the really bad heat waves. Um, and we thank the, the staff. Sue used to do it, Kelly does it, so that we can uh, help the people. Heat, heat stroke is very, very bad for seniors. Um, and very prevalent, by the way. So, it's something to, to do. No plan, prepare. Prepare where you're gonna go. You know, prepare everything you're gonna carry with you. Know what you're gonna do. It's not a bad idea to contact somebody, family member, daughter, son, sister, brother, cousin, and say, look, I have to come up with an emergency plan of where I can go if I have to evacuate my house. Can I come to your house? Okay. Just to, did I send a message? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I've done it before in my film. Um, so, talk to people, it's part of your plan. Know where you can go. When we last time we had evacuate Pomeroy Manor, we had going from the people who say um, I'm not going anywhere, and us having to have the conversation about okay, are they going? Um, uh, to people say I have nowhere to go. Um, there's places that you can go. There's people that you know. There's people that you can keep go to. Believe me. You don't want to go to a shelter if you can avoid it. Uh, <coughs> shelter is going to be a uh, barrack sleeping, um, uh, multiple people using the same bathroom. Uh, if you want any type of privacy, good luck. Um, uh, limited uh, availability uh, for things that you may, just personal comforts that you may want to have. That's why the point Chief Co made about uh, having a message sent to uh, your kids if they live out of town, they can then prepare. Okay? When you're preparing, you know, plan to prepare. Share. I'll add to that. Talk to your family members. Talk to your friends. This is my plan. This is what I have. And this is what I need to do. Okay, somebody who's coming to help you, you know, you, we have an emergency, we have an evacuation, your son shows up, <coughs> let them know in advance where you keep your emergency kit, where you keep your extra equipment, things that you need to, to go with. Um, it's very important. Um, oxygen. Oxygen is a crazy problem for uh, Police departments, fire departments, and people who are going to help you for emergency evacuation. You'd be very surprised the number of people who have oxygen in their house that do not have a portable oxygen mm -hmm. kit. Okay? If it's something that you can get, even if you don't use it every day, get it. Because if you do have to leave, there's, we, that will give you at least a supply of oxygen until they can make provisions for you to have. Oxygen. There may not be that ability. Excuse me? I said I don't smoke with them. Don't smoke with them. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's also true. Um, okay. I bored you enough. Mm -hmm. Questions? No, but a suggestion that I can, if I may. Someplace along the line, somebody suggested way back when, make copies of your house insurance, your health insurance, Put them on a scan disk, uh, car insurance, all of your documents that you really need to have if something happens at the house and they get washed away or burned down mm -hmm. during the emergency. Very Make important. copies and put them and have them in your kit. Karen was talking about 
things that you need to, for the license. So that's a good thing. Birth certificate, yeah. deeds, uh, insurance policies, uh, all of those things. Make copies. As you said, put them in your file. Mm -hmm. Have it in the back. That's something that's not going to go bad in the back of a backpack. Yeah. Okay? Update them. Yes. <laughs> Very good point. Yes. You didn't talk about keeping any food in that pack. Well, it is, it's not a bad idea to put something in there, a snack or something like that. The, they used to advocate that you should put, you know, you get to put have canned food side, put aside and everything like that. Um, the, the problem that they have with that is, uh, number one, if you put it, you fix your kit up and you've got your kit, you've got your canned food in there and you don't use it for five years and you open up your thing and your Campbell's soup expired two and a half years ago. Um, it's probably still good, but a lot of people won't try to have it. Um, if you do put something in there, put something in that is light, it's something that's easy. Anything you put in there for food is going to add weight to what you have to carry. Okay? And that's the thing that to be considered. I mentioned now and then how we have to rotate the food. Right. Because it wasn't always food that we ate. You know, we don't always eat a lot of Raymond noodle soups, you know what I mean? Because we saw kind of that, but we had a kids we used to vacate. We used to eat because we were out power for three days. Mm -hmm. Now one time, so we had to eat that stuff. This is an area to make sure that, um, that you can put it in hot water on a uh, grill or something, you know, because we had. Food that I need, I'm not, I bought macaroni and cheese, because I have a way that they didn't have any power. Yeah. They didn't have a generator. So, but, yeah. The, unfortunately, through their experience that FEMA has had with emergencies, <clears throat> they now, uh, they have in Massachusetts, MEMA has, they have areas in which they have food stockpile. So if we had to evacuate, we said, okay, we're going to use Cranville School as, as an emergency shelter, let's say. We can contact FEMA. They can send us pallets of food so that we don't have to worry. The, the key, the key when you have with what you're talking about is having, you need to have something. How long is it going to take for the food to get to you is one of the issues. Is. So if you have some snacks, you have things uh, to so that you can eat, um, especially if you're diabetic. Um, Make sure that you have them. But uh, a lot of that stuff is going to be controlled at the shelter by the people that run the shelter. Sheriff's Department does a great deal of stuff uh, as for storing things. I don't know if they the, have a food warehouse there. They, I know they have the equipment that we need. Um, we call it the Sheriff's Department to get the equipment. For us, that, it's a wonderful thing. At the same time, it's kind of silly because you have 34 communities in, in the Berkshire County. And the sheriff's department department has one of everything. Um, so whoever has the first one to call uh, and they dispatch the thing, anybody else has to wait for what's going on. I advocate for more things to be put in there. Start with the sheriff's department if they have them, but give them the resources they need to be able to respond. Uh, so questions? I think the Red Cross still has an adult bag available that you can buy. That I have two of them. And they do. They come all basically prepared. So it's an area you can look at. If you have any ability at all on a, on a computer, you can go and, and get things. One of the things I brought with me today are bags. Have everybody take at least one. Um, and you can use them in the grocery store, you can use them where they are. They're pretty heavy duty. Um, and you basically, you could use this as a go bag. You can put your equipment in it. Uh, you know, you can't seal it, but it's a good size bag. Um, and take this. Uh, I like these, I got these basically because use them for shopping. But every time you use it for shopping, what are you gonna be looking at? Okay, reinforcement. Okay, reinforcement. You go to the laundry and the dark should be your own with stuff at the store and say, hey, I could use extra batteries put in here. I could use, you know, first aid supplies. 
that as you went to the, the medicine cabinet, you didn't have any band-aids, but you knew you had the first aid kit, and you go back. Mm -hmm. So you went and took that, and you took the band-aids out, and now you need new yeah. band-aids for the go kit. Okay? Be prepared. Uh, you're very, seniors, people our age are the most vulnerable group nowadays for emergencies. There are all kinds of programs for seniors. There's all kinds of programs for kids. Um, and they expect everybody in between to take care of the two. But the honest the truth is, of it is, is a family with two small children, and they have an emergency, then I got to think about Aunt Ruth and sitting on the street until a little bit later, because they're worried about making sure they get Johnny and Susie together, get them out, and then at some point in time, I'm sure they will think about it, but um, until then, uh, you need to make sure that you do what you can to take care of yourself. If you have questions about things, if you, you wonder about uh, what you should get, if you want somebody to take a look at, at the go bag you have and make suggestions, I'll come out and do that. Okay? Um, but take advantage of the people that you have in the community that will help you. Please, the fire. Except for Jeff. He works nights. I just want to make a comment. First of all, thank you, because this is really good information. And I think if you just watch the news now and what's going on in Hawaii and what has happened last year mm -hmm. out in California with the wildfires and probably going to happen again, this, this is good information and it kind of makes it, uh, brings it home to us how important it is to, to be prepared. Right. It is, you, it is. You drive. If you do drive, there's absolutely no reason why you can't have that bag that has your clothes in your trunk. Okay. I was just thinking about that. You know, you can have a set of clothes in your trunk ready to go. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. The go bag is a little bit different because there are things that you have to make sure you check. Uh, your medications. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of stuff, shampoos and things like that, you know, don't last you forever. You don't have to worry about those. Um, when you talk about the, the paperwork that you put in there, one of the list of things in the paperwork is you list all the names of your doctors, yeah. phone numbers, contact numbers. Kids. Okay. Kids. Pretty yeah. Kids. Yeah. Children, things like that. Um, it, it, it seems a little bit like, oh my God, we got to do so much. A lot of this stuff you do once, except now I've, I've had my doctors so long, they're all retiring. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so, but you, you have that information in there so that people can turn around and have allergies. Are you allergic to something? You don't, don't need to get to a, uh, uh, you know, a shelter and be sitting somewhere and having somebody come by and go, oh, can, can we give this person food and hand you something, a uh, peanut butter bar, and have you be peanut allergy, okay? Medical alert, yeah. Keep anything and everything. There is nothing that's too trivial to put in there. Believe me, you may have somebody look at something and say, why is this in here? Okay? But, if number one, if the person does it to your face, stand up and slap them. <laughs> <laughs> number two, there's nothing, any information that you have about yourself that you can provide that can help anybody who needs to help you. If you're laying on the floor, if you're unconscious, that person needs to be able to turn around and help you. So they need all of the information you can have. You can have it in the go kit. Um, we used to have the little uh, cards you put on your, your refrigerator. Uh, the file. Yeah, the file you put in the refrigerator. You Things like that. that. Right. Now you, have, now, you you have, now you have the, the pink slip you have oh, yeah. the all the doctors and put on your refrigerator. Right. Yeah. If you want to be a uh, life-saving uh, measures taken or not. Healthcare. Right. Like it's a great thing to have in here, having a kid a copy of a healthcare box. Information about having it. Yeah, it's a little form here. My mother's been gone for a while. But my, we had my mother finally fill out a healthcare box. Okay. And she, she named my brother to be her healthcare box. He lives in Sunday. He answers his phone once, twice a month. <laughs> um, you, you call him and it says, you know, the message center is full. Yeah. Please call back later. Yeah. Um, and if he calls you back, it's at 4 o'clock in the morning. 
But, so, you know, it, those of you who knew my mother, uh, it was a long conversation to get her convinced that she needs to name me as a healthcare proxy too, because they're local, they're able to take action. You have a healthcare proxy, you have a DNR, you have a healthcare proxy, and the person who is your contact lives in California, the doctor doesn't probably is not going to follow that order because he doesn't know who he's talking to. Okay? Find somebody locally. I've had a couple friends that I was their healthcare proxy because their family wasn't close by. Okay? And if you do a healthcare proxy, sit down with the people that are going to be your proxy and explain to them in detail what your wishes are. That's what I ended up doing with my mother. Okay? You got to do it so that you follow, make sure those people follow your wishes. Once again, it's all part of your parent. Okay? Dan, thank you so much. Any extra? How many do you need? Just two. Two? Yeah, one for Linda and one for Stephen. I can give you. Can probably bring a couple out of her desk too. Yeah. Uh, because I'll give her one and I'll give him one. I'll give him one. Yeah, she's more up here. Yeah, I will leave copies of everything I have here. Um, information. Just one again. Okay. Um, and once again, if you have questions, make a phone call. Okay, you have questions about anything to do with your safety, call the police department, call the fire department, call me. Okay, they will answer questions. The staff here at the COA will be very, very willing to help you and to give you information. Unless you get Patty in a bad day, then you know how she gets. <laughs> um, so, anyways, thank you for your time. Um, and uh, think about this. And... Uh, do whatever you can to protect you to so help us protect you also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome anytime. Huh? You're welcome anytime. As you look at our uh, agenda one. here, Either one. we have uh, police department, the fire department, the yeah. um, DA office, emergency management. You want here this time. Oh. So if you would like to come to every meeting, you're more than like welcome. Yeah. Last Ever since I retired, <laughs> uh, there's been a lot of meetings. Yeah. So. As I said, many hats that you wear. You missed the traffic commission. You didn't say anything about the traffic. I can. Anybody live on High Street? <laughs> so High Street area? Uh, High Street. Okay. High Street is getting torn up. The sidewalks are all getting torn up. They started today. Oh, They're going nice. all the way from Main Street all the way to Park Avenue. They're going to do all new sidewalks on Park Avenue, just one side, but they're going to do all new sidewalks up and down Park Avenue. It's part of a program that we call uh, uh, Community Street. Streets. Street. 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 Excuse me. See, I'm the head of the committee. I got to go to <laughs> um, But what it does is it's part of what you want to do with the police streets is what they call walkability. We're trying to make the middle of Dalton is, is beneficial for people to walk safely if you walk on uh, Park Avenue. Part of that plan is there's going to be a sidewalk going from uh, Park, uh, High Street to the uh, driveway of the Senior Center also. So you don't have to walk in the road if you come down and walk down here. Um, How about signage for the Senior Center? Signage for the Senior Center? Everybody knows where it is. Hey, no. Oh, After the vote the other day, What's happening with Dalton Division Road? And should anyone like that? Dalton Division Road is on what they call a TIP program, um, a traffic improvement plan. Um, scheduled in roughly 2023 that they will uh, totally redo the road as they did South Street and uh, Housatonic Street. Um, it is using federal money. The whole project's going to cost somewhere around $9 million. Five, six years is probably going to be closer to about $13 million. Um, and they'll do the entire project. Um, we voted, have to vote. The town of Dalton's share of that is to do the engineering, and that's what the 
the question on the ballot was the other day, which passed, by the way. Um, what it did is it allows the town to put it as a debt exclusion, um, which allows them to pay it a little bit differently than it becoming a tax thing that we have to increase the tax and pay it every year forever, basically, because they never take those off and yeah. take them out. Half the, road is Pittsfield. Are they paying? Half the road is Pittsfield. Are they paying anything? Dalton, the entire road is Dalton. Uh, Dalton controls Dalton and Vision Road. Um, Pittsfield controls Hubbard Avenue. And if you actually look at the uh, accurate plans for the, the, the town boundaries, a lot of the houses on the early part of Dalton and Vision Road are actually in Dalton. At least half of them are. As the town line goes through them. Um, and uh, Dalton and Pittsfield, about, I want to say about 60 years ago, came up with an agreement saying, look, at, Dalton's going to take care of Dalton Vision Road, Pittsfield's going to take care of Hubbard Avenue, because it happens on the other side also, that part of those uh, businesses are in Pittsfield. So Dalton has the entire obligation for it. Pittsfield will be working with us on the plan. We've already sat down and talked to them about it. Um, if we put sidewalks in, depending on what the plan is, there'll probably be some land taking that has to be done simply because uh, I'm getting off the subject of emergency management. Every street has a right of way. Right of way goes from, is, is determined, and then from, it's anywhere from 15 to 30 feet on either side of the center of the right of way, the city or town has a right to uh, use. Problem being is that 150, 200 years ago, when they put roads in, people would be planning a road and go, oh, there's a rock. <laughs> so we're going here. So the right of way might be going right here, but the road's over here. So it, it develops problems now in the modern days where you can uh, pull out your phone and say, where am I? And it'll tell you that uh, longitude and latitude you're standing um, for going out and planning roads. So the town has to pay for all the engineering. Pittsfield's going to help with the land taking if there's a necess necessity for it. We'll see it. We're not going to see anything as for uh, digging and redoing the road like that until 2023, if you always. Good. I won't worry about that. <laughs> I asked you where the worst one think you want to see. I'm sorry, Hunter. That golf road was declared a scenic road many years ago yes. by senior John Bartels. Yes. So that's, so Lanesboro and that dog, uh, Pizio, they're all going to start chipping in and doing it. Doing what? The golf road. Pittsfield has a very strong attitude about what's going on with uh, anything to do with the golf road. And when we used to, if we had a problem, we'd call them about an accident or something like that, they, they used to say, quick words, quick words, words. Um, there's not, the, Lanesboro takes care of their side, Dalton takes care of its side, and, and we combine to take care of where it gets for us. But the, they don't do a lot of work on it. And there's a reason. Drive up right past the high school. You know, drive down on Kirchner Road, they fixed up some of it. Um, there's too many roads and not enough money. The state gives us X amount of money every year to do uh, fixed streets and all you need to do is have one major problem go on, and all of that money's gone. Are they going to do anything in the corner of Double Vision prior to 2023 or whatever? That corner. Which, yeah. which corner? <laughs> Williams Double Vision. No. Washington. No, but that is part of the plan to totally reconfigure that intersection. Our road, Virgin Road, Washington Mountain. <laughs> Washington Mountain Road, we're working on right now. Okay. Dan can talk forever. I love yeah. Dan. You've known him forever and ever. Thank you. Thank you. Before I get more questions. So, I'll leave it. Does anybody want to take a look at what we have here? I can make arrangements. I actually, I actually have to go to another meeting and add one. Um, but I got, I got a while I could. You can stand around and answer, answer individual questions. Or if you want to give me your, your information for me to put you in uh, over at. Okay? So I'll have a little bit. We'll give you a chance to look at things.
grab bags. I have more. I think if any of you want to share them. I have stacks over there if you need something for off the road. No, I got to go pick up here. Yes. Can take a break. We can do that. Everybody wants a break. She's got a break. She's got a break. Oh, you can go. Well, we can just jump to you. I, I really don't have much to report. I, I've been asked to be I don't really have a lot to report. Other than, you know, here's a debate tonight. I would encourage everybody to go. Here's a debate tonight. Go ahead. Um, hi, everyone. Me. I'm with the district attorney's office. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't been here for the last two years. I broke my ankle, tumbling up. So, um, but in any case, um, I just wanted to let you know um, the rest of the trials are continuing. Um, there was a debate. There was a very hotly debated debate this more uh, this afternoon, <coughs> this evening, starting at 6:30 at the American Legion uh, in Pittsfield. It's a district attorney debate, and uh, it's the first of what may be many debates. Um, it should be very interesting. It's going to be a very, um, <clears throat> a very live um, race this year. This is the first time in probably almost 10 years the district attorney's office has had some competition. So um, I would encourage people to go and listen. Um, for those of you that don't know, Paul has been named the acting, acting DA. So he has been picking up where my former boss has left off. Uh, following his pretty much his initiatives and continuing trying to continue business as, as normal as usual and campaigning. So it's been a very it's a very busy time at our office right now. Uh, but regarding triad, things are, are uh, tri tyranny now hasn't kicked up again. But I expect there will probably be sent an invitation to the DA's office. So Pittsfield, North Adams, and Alfred Gray Barrington and Egremont are all in full swing. So, um, sorry I haven't been here. I have missed everybody. Thank you for the card that I got from everyone. I appreciate that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Unless you have a specific question, I can answer. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Um, we want to thank Gregory. We want to run through Especially the rest of the agenda. Do the agenda. Do the agenda and get it over with. Okay? That sounded like a ghost. Alright, then the first on the list is our chief police over there. Okay. Hello. It's been a while since I've seen you. As you can see, or if you've been here the past few months, I'm trying to incorporate Officer Dorothy DeMora into the fold of Triad. Um, she is uh, at a week-long training at BCC right now, as well as covering her midnight shift. Um, her training is uh, crisis intervention. Um, we had a couple officers certified in that and moved on, so uh, I'd like to have, and we've also signed a pledge to have um, two of our officers, it's 20% of your force, workforce to be crisis intervention trained. Uh, that's Dodge's background in her, in her college degree, um, and it was something that she came forward and said she was interested in continuing. Um, the big push nationally for police is to have more training uh, with people who are having uh, either in a, involved in a mental crisis or have some kind of mental health uh, issue going on, uh, long term or short term, and recognizing that if somebody is not being verbally compliant to our verbal commands, not aggressive, assaultive, just they're not listening to our commands, that it may be cut to uh, something going on and to approach them differently. Um, we signed on a pledge, uh, Massachusetts uh, is very big on board on, on a national pledge for police departments to join this initiative, but Massachusetts is, uh, is uh, one of the lead in the nation, and my officers were trained last year, uh, four hours two years ago, four hours last year, and eight hours this year um, for this initiative. And uh, it's, it's, it already came into play, you know, just this week John Marley had to deal with a youth uh, who had some issues adopted, you know, and had some issues going on. And the, uh, he was injured, but it was nothing uh, critical. But the, uh, the emergency personnel had to run in like we usually do and, and you know, just start helping the, the child or the youth. Uh, and uh, Officer Marley had the wherewithal to make the uh, emergency uh, technicians to stand by a state trooper off duty who saw the kid's demeanor, saw something was up and saw Officer Marley alone. So he started running over to help Officer Marley. 
just doing what he's been trained. And Officer Marley told everyone, back off, back off, back off. And for about 10 minutes, just stayed, you know, about uh, 15 feet away from the individual until he realized he now caught the attention of the individual, could have a conversation, calmed him down, got the voluntary compliance of the person to allow the EMTs to, to tend to him. And it took a situation there that, you know, again, the body language of the kid for the trooper who was off duty who stopped was fight or flight. And he, you know, the old school thinking is just rush in, grab him, throw him on the ground and cuff him. So, you know, it's, we're seeing a national trend, but, you know, locally that's uh, our initiative as well. That's why Dodd is not here. But I do want to start folding in my newer or younger, maybe both, officers uh, into community outreach programs so that you know who I am, I know who you are, and I love being here, you're a good group, but I want to have those newer, younger officers out in the community so that you uh, get to know them as well and trust them uh, as much as I hope you trust me. Uh, other than that, we've been very busy with a bunch of things. I want to thank Sue. I got here and I was very, uh, going from one thing to another and compartmentalized and we like to just hit and run, solve the problem, go on to the next one. And she took two seconds to say, you look good, how are you? And it grounded me to realize, breathe, you're at triad. It's, a, it's, it's not a defensive posture. You don't need a defensive posture. I was going to give uh, two seconds of uh, my face and she realized the community, uh, you know, it, it is good and you can relax. But we've been very busy um, as far as work or many other items on, the, on our agenda. Um, finance, this is a very stressful time for me. Uh, if you watched the select board meeting Monday, it was televised. I had to go before the board and ask for the most amount of money uh, I've ever had in seven years to ask for uh, just to get through this year's budget. I already submitted next year's budget, but um, I think everyone saw this coming, so the board was very good to me. I have to go before the finance committee, and I believe they'll be as supportive. When I pitched uh, this year's budget back in February 2017, I said it was probably going to be flawed because we're losing two full-time officers to the state police. Well, they hear that, but now here we are in real time with that budget, and I'm having to go ask for $60,000 more. Um, fortunately, it will not have an effect, immediate effect on a tax base or anything that, like that because um, we have a regional dispatch center. We still budget the $120,000 to operate that, but the state reimburses us because we are regional. And so that goes back, back into the general fund. So each year it's kind of the planning for a rainy day in that budget. And so I'm able to, to take $60,000 of that. So it, 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 it is kind of that hidden contingency plan in the budget. So fortunately, um, that, that's available to us. Otherwise, it, it could be a tricky situation with the budget. Where is it going to come from? And it might affect taxes or have to get further approval from the town. But even though it's not my fault that officers left and we had a train, we had an officer get injured twice this year, uh, two different times, uh, we pay those officers and while we're paying them, we're uh, filling their shifts with overtime. Although most people recognize, well, it's not my fault. It still is, well, what are you doing about it? That's your job. And I realize that that's my credibility. I don't answer calls, but it's my responsibility to the taxpayers to be responsible for, to the budget. Um, I can tell you in seven years, if I had to take $10,000 one year, say, hey, I need $10,000 more, the next year we were really frugal in our spending and didn't go out and buy new equipment, or, and I was able to give the $10,000 back. I think one year I had to borrow seven, the next year I gave seven or nine back. So I kind of broke even, and the finance committee has been great in recognizing that. When I asked for money, uh, Terry Williams was always the first to say, uh, you know, just been really good. Well, this, this is a lot of money, and, and uh, you know, it's been frustrating for me, but, we're going to get to full staff at some point, and the officers that we're hiring are good caliber officers. If we can just keep them, that'd be great. Uh, you know, we have two, so two went to state police, Mosey and Munch. They're doing good. They're both working full time out of the Cheshire Barracks uh, as state troopers. Uh, we hired two more, Kennedy and Levesque. Uh, we hired them first as part timer, but now they're at a 26 week full time academy. We already know that both of them have gotten invitations, so we're paying them to go to the academy and then come back and fill those voids. They both have already gotten invitations to go to the next state police academy. It looks like we're going to lose Kennedy, and I don't blame him. It's a, it's a, he's got more room for opportunity for uh, advancement, specialized training, um, and better pay. And so I, I don't blame anyone for doing that. 
So Kennedy will, will likely move on, and Nick Levesque is chosen to not go through the process and stay with us. So Rodney Bazell did the same thing. He had gotten a letter to, from state police to say, come on, and he turned it down. I don't know if he regrets it or not, but he, he willingly said, no, I want to stay for Dalton. So uh, it does happen where we are able to retain uh, good officers. Um, so of two that are going, creating this financial dilemma for you, one of them already will probably go uh, in October or whenever they run the next state police academy. So we'll have to hire a new person, possibly send them to the academy, backfill that shift. Um, so it seems like it's a never ending drill for us. Um, but we're getting there. And when we are full staff, we have a very sound budget. Uh, there's no need for me to ask for money when we have full staff. It's just when we're short, we're paying somebody to be trained and paying somebody to backfill their shifts that I just have no solution for. Is other communities doing the same thing? They are. There's only one community I know for full time they are. Uh, the state is looking at going to a system called Post. They've been talking about this for years. They started talking about when Dan was the chief. Um, and but it's it's getting closer. The uh, the person in charge of the training council uh, in uh, in the state, he is all about post, and he's been trying to get it. And what post means is very much like Florida. If you're from other states, it's like really anything else. You put yourself through college and get your degree, and then you go apply for the job. Well, it would be the same thing for the police academy. The person would go um, and get all their certifications on their own, they pay for it. So if you want to be a nurse, you got to go put yourself through nursing school and then get the job. If you want to be a doctor, you got to go through uh, an EMT. You have to go through, you know, I think Hudson Valley is the closest one that really gives it all up. They can meet the Hudson Valley Community College, take all their EMT, uh, advance or basic, whatever, and then come back and apply for a job. They're looking to do that. Um, and it would move away from the old adage of, we're going to hire a police officer, pay him to be trained, and stay. And, you know, I like that idea that if you're able to invest in the officer and help them train, train and hire them, but it, it, we had more of a fitness back then. Nobody really left. You had you paid for that person to stay for 32 years, so it was a good investment. It just isn't that way anymore. We got him. By the way, we did the same thing. Dan, when he hired me, he paid me to go to part-time academy for just to be a reserve officer. I was paid 24 hours a week to sit in class and add one and get my part-time certification, I came back. It worked out for the town because they invested in me and I stayed. He also paid me for, for my full-time academy when I went and I came back and it worked because I stayed. Um, we were losing so many part-timers, we got away. We were one of the few departments, whether it was us in Worcester, that was still paying part-timers to go to the academy. So we got, when I took over, they level funded us and I said, we got we to spend money smarter. What's one way we can do it is require that the part-timers go to the academy on their own. It's a part-time academy, that's why they can do it. They can still keep a full-time job to support themselves through the night part-time academy. And then they come to us with that degree and we hire a part-time. A little bit different for full-time, but we may go to that post system. That's all I got, any questions? Nice to see you all again, very good turnout. Uh, we're seeing more numbers and Dottie will likely be here. I may show up in June because we got some picnic planning and I don't want to just throw her in the deep end and Hope she swims. I'll help her out. I'll help her out with the picnic planning, but we'll see you next year. Next on the list down here is the sheriff's department. Well, actually, the fire department. And Jerry's not here today, so we'll jump over to Deputy Jason Roy. All right, thank you. I'll just keep this short for you. Thank you. Um, just a couple updates um, at the jail. Uh, thank you for the clothing donations that keep coming in for the males and the females. Um, female program, um, the facility in Chicopee that they're incarcerated at, um, they are traveling back here uh, once a week to go to a women's betters group now. Um, so we have a facility, the old facility at 2nd Street, they're meeting there and they're being transported by mentors. Um, and while they're there, uh, the clothing has been donated. Been donated. Um, they can look through and take some clothes. So when they get released, uh, they have you know somewhat of a, of a wardrobe to start out with um, you know, to look for employment. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for that. Um, our work crews are getting out there. They're very busy for uh, cleaning up the grounds. Um, it's bad. A lot of wind and uh, tree damage, so uh, you'll see some, some more crews out on the, on the state highways helping out with that too. Um, 
any questions? I can I can take the donations here um, at, our, at our monthly meetings. It usually works out pretty good. It's easy for everybody. Jason, thank you. And here we are to get her report. we heard from Dan. Um, our Hinsdale Police Chief, and Mary, uh, Mary Lou, is not here today, so we'll skip over that. We do have Kelly over here in the corner for the senior side. House on aging. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, so. Just a few updates for what's going on around here. We did schedule that camera class. It's going to be on June 9th in the afternoon. I, I didn't write down the exact time. But that class is going to, going to be not to learn how to take a picture, but to learn about what your camera is and what it does and what the settings mean and things like that initially. And then if there's enough interest to continue the class further, we'll get into like editing and formatting and making choices on, you know, what kind of lighting you use and, and composition and things like that. So if you would like to come to the class, make sure you sign up because we're printing some materials for people. Um, we're preparing for the volunteer dinner, which is going to be on June 29th. And the Council on Aging Board is working on their strategic plan because our five-year plan runs out this year. So we'll be setting up for the next five years. I'm in the final stages of preparing the senior tax work off program information, so the guidelines and the application. Um, that should go to the select board, their next select board meeting for final approval. Keep your fingers crossed. Um, at the next town meeting, the, the special town meeting, one of the things that is supposed to be on it is the capital funds. And one of those requests is for the acoustic treatment of these two rooms here. So I fully expect everybody to be there. <laughs> to, to, well, I don't have the date for it. June 23rd. Oh, thank you. <laughs> June 23rd? Fifth. Oh, June 25th. Okay. That's a meeting. It's a special town meeting. Yeah. Yes, I guess I'm probably probably more coming. Yes. 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 With um, community development out of Pittsfield, there's a grant for eight pieces of outdoor exercise equipment. So the plan is, is if we get this grant, we're going to put in like a room trail that goes around this part of the property and then space out the exercise equipment as we go along and people will be able to use that. And there'll be like a little station with instructions on how to use each piece of the equipment. So some outdoor exercise and encourage people to walk safely and be able to get more exercise. You'll notice that we've lost half of our parking over there. <laughs> We're probably not going to get that back. The, it, right now it's rolled off because they're, they're doing some soil testing. They're looking for PCBs and things like that. The building is scheduled to come down some right in between the Veterans Day luncheon and the holiday party. <laughs> oh, no. So I'm not quite sure what we're going to do with either of those things. We're not going to have enough room to park, so we're looking at possible options for shuttling or perhaps another location. So that's what's going on here. Thanks, Cal. What, what was the date on that camera? The class? camera class is June 9th. That's a Saturday. June 8th. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can't read my own writing. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. And our treasurer's not here, but Harry gave me the books last month. I 
How is Kat doing? It's uh, getting better, but she's still out. She got a boot on. So okay. she can't. And she moved in us into Pine Grove, but she's upstairs, so she don't get down too much. Oh. But she's making progress. She can't drive enough for another month, I guess. Okay. But she's making progress. Tell her we all miss her, please. I'll tell her. Uh, but I did deposit last month's uh, donation here for the ticket, and that was $26. So from what I was able to gather, we've got $576.70. I put my glasses on, I'm like 70 cents. So, um, Jason's right here. Let's do a drawing for the 50-50, and it looks like there's $15 a piece. 121, 039. That's me. Oh, that's awesome. That's me. There you go. You're only getting a choice of a whole lot of ones, or <laughs> And this is an awesome crowd. Keep coming. Bring more people. Uh, the next meeting? Pardon me? announce the next meeting? The next meeting is June 20th. I will not be here like always. That is our camping week. It is collection of officers. Please think about which office you're going to take. I've been told because they've been doing this for too long, it's time to retire. So, I'll stay there because nobody else will do it. No, we decided because I'm not going to take it that somebody else is going to have to do it. Okay. So, anyways, think about the officers and uh, have a nice summer. The picnic is coming up on July 17th, and it'll be up at the VFW at one o'clock. At one o'clock. You can go there. You're at the VFW well, and you can all of them. Tell you what, because it was... Jeff, don't we usually do it early? Yeah. I, I got it reserved from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. figuring that well, no matter what time you pick, this should be... <laughs> I think well, I was going to say, Jason is going to be in touch with us with some of the details from the Sheriff's Department. So let's sort of figure it out through the Sheriff's Department what time is good for that. There you go. Yeah. How about that and announce it at the next meeting? Judy has a list of the memberships that usually goes. Please let her know that you're coming so that the sheriff can just decide on how much food to bring. But I'm only here 8th wow. July. Wow. July 18th. July 18th. I'm going to come call her. Come jump in and have some of the refreshments. Thank you to those that brought refreshments today. And there's a 